uh, call the meeting to order. Um, this is the August 18th meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council. I welcome everyone. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Wintrow? Here. Asplund? Yes. Sims? Here. Housh? Here. McQueen? Here. Also present is uh, Village Manager Patty Bates. Uh, announcements um, from anyone? I do have one. Um, I don't know if everyone's heard about the uh, Children's Center's uh, very unique fundraiser, Hunt the Cyclops. It's uh, kind of themed after the Amazing Race, if anybody's familiar with that, a scavenger hunt with challenges. And speaking of challenges, I also put an enrollment form uh, on all the council members' uh, <laughs> tables. And so I'd like to challenge all of us to form a team. I think uh, <laughs> some healthy competition would be a lot of fun. And uh, may the best uh, competitor win. Thank you. <laughs> um, any other announcements? OK. Um, we will not have minutes tonight. The minutes will, for the last meeting for the um, August, what, fourth meeting will be at the next meeting. Yes. Um, we seem to have a pretty compact agenda. I like to see that. Um, anything um, council wants to move or add to the agenda? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd like to decide where we put the um, proposal about the uh, environmental commission and I guess oh. I'd rather not do it under commission since it's not um, really a commission business. report. We'll just add it under new business. That was what okay. I was thinking. And also I'd like to add um, a, a proposed approval for a uh, alternate to the public art commission. But that will be done, during, will be the done during the commission. Okay. Reports, then. Um, and I would also like to and uh, Patty, tell me if this is a good idea or if we should wait for Melissa to be back. We never really did talk about the budget meetings. Um, they're all scheduled for regular council meetings, and we need, I'd like to decide now if we're going to meet at 6 o'clock, if we're going to have a special Saturday meeting, how, how we want to handle it. Should Melissa be here, do you think? Uh, I think it would be better for her to be okay, here. Okay. We'll um, just because I sent the email to her that you had sent to right. me asking that, and she didn't have a chance to respond. Okay, so we'll, we'll hold that for the next meeting then. Great. Um, okay, that sounds good. Um, so I think that's it. Um, and also, citizens, if you would please, and council members also, oh, please turn off your point. cell phones. <laughs> and we do take public comment um, at certain, you know, during during most of the of the meeting. Um, if you're recognized by um, the chair, you need to come up uh, to the microphone and state your name. Um, so I guess we're ready to, to oh petitions and communications. Lori, are you? Uh, yeah. Do have time to Sorry, run yeah, that? Just a, um, there weren't very many. Um, it might be helpful to just a quick reminder that we have the <coughs> brown water alert, and it's likely to be particularly bad. I've already gotten <coughs> some reports from people um, because of the delayed hydrant flushing. Um, and so it's likely to be very brown, um, and it's going going to be going on all week and starting on the south side, proceeding north. So, if you're on the north side, you might not have had it yet. But uh, well, uh, and people in the center of the village and on the south side have definitely <coughs> let me know. Yeah. Well, and yeah, it. it um, I guess maybe we should tell people that we've actually added Guinness to the <laughs> to the water yeah, system yeah, because yeah, that is exactly what it looks like it is the color of Guinness it's very dark Guinness. at least some of the oh. some of the samples I saw now we have a whole house filter and have not and those right. things what cost the alcohol oh, they cost about <laughs> <laughs> they cost about thirty dollars and I know we're, we're hopefully not going to be having this problem for much longer but it has been worth every penny to have the the whole house filter we we have not had any problems with it um, and it does work with you flush each, each faucet one by one. Mm -hmm. Just flush the fa faucets one by one? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know, too. But we also did receive um, appreciation for how much notification um, that we have given. In the newspaper, we had signs around. Um, I think it's been yeah. about as we've, we've um, covered it as well as I think we could. Yeah. Okay. Um, we had a... Uh, pretty extensive memo from the Greene County Solid Waste Management, which was their um, draft plan. And Patty Bates uh, said, and talk, talks about this a little bit in her uh, manager's report, um, basically that it seems to be exceeding its set goal and generating necessary reven revenue. 
I don't know if you have anything more to add to that. Not really. Um, it, it looks overall uh, to be a very good plan, and they're administering it very well. So I don't, I don't think that it would need, in my opinion, in many changes at all, if any. But I would say that that this is the public comment period. So they will actually they they will be having a hearing. Um, I I'm not sure. It, the, what's in the packet says when the hearing is, um, and they are only taking public comment between when they release the report and that public hearing. So if citizens or staff or anybody has any input, right, they 30 need days to do from if, August 4th, so basically September 4th, it looks like. Yeah, probably here, the, here, right. Okay. It's in the first paragraph of the first. Okay. So no, just if if, if for second if, paragraph. And I think it's linked. Um, do we do we have a link to it, this it on is, ours? It, uh, we do not have a link on okay. our website, but um, we can certainly put one on there. And it is also available at the libraries. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's August 8th to September 8th. So um, so that's the 30 day uh, review period. All right. Um, Let's see after that uh, it was there was just the mayor's monthly report and uh, there's a big summer fest happening in Jamestown and then we had a note from Mary Cargan thanking us for the fair acres street repair it was last week's I think it was on the table last last week, week. so yeah okay thank you um, next we have uh, public hearings and legislation uh, resolution 2014-41 approving utility assessment procedure for past due utility accounts okay this is certifying delinquent water sewer trash and storm drainage bills to the auditor of Greene County State of Ohio for placement on the Greene County tax duplicate whereas certain property owners in the village of Yellow Springs Ohio have delinquent water sewer trash and storm drainage bills and all attempts to collect these outstanding amounts have been unsuccessful and whereas pursuant to the Ohio revised code section 743.04 it is necessary to collect these delinquent water sewer trash and storm drainage bills by certifying these amounts to the auditor of Greene County State of Ohio for placement on Greene County's tax duplicate along with the interest and penalties allowed by law. And whereas a list of the property owners, their addresses with par parcel identification numbers and the amounts unpaid are incorporated by reference and marked as Exhibit 1 in this resolution, now therefore be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, that Section 1, the property owners who have delinquent amounts of water, sewer, trash, and storm drainage bills are identified in the list marked and attached to this resolution as Exhibit 1. The list of property owners and their property as identified in Exhibit 1 shall be certified by the Clerk of this Council to the Auditor of Greene County, State of Ohio, to be placed by him on the tax due and collected as other taxes are collected according to law, including interest and penalties. Payments received by the Village of Yellow Springs prior to September 5th, 2014 at 5 o'clock p.m. The close of business shall not be certified but removed from this list. Section 2, the Council finds and determines that all formal actions of the Council relating to the adoption of this resolution have been taken at open meetings of this Council and that deliberations of the Council and of its committees resulting in such formal action took place in meetings open to the public in compliance with all statutory requirements, including the requirements of Section 121.22 of the Ohio Revised Code. Thank you. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, Patty, I will turn this over to you for discussion. Uh, these four properties that are listed in Exhibit 1 um, are four owner-occupied properties. These are not rental properties, and um, they are listed in Exhibit 1 along with the delinquent amounts um, owed on those properties. Uh, if Council chooses to move forward on it, what will happen after the second reading um, is that they will be um, certified to the auditor for the delinquent amount plus a 10% penalty, five of that, 5% of that would go to the auditor, 5% would go to the village for administrative costs. Um, and then those delinquent amounts would be paid on their taxes as part of their tax bill on the next two payments. Okay. And this is a resolution, so there's only oh, one reading. So this will take effect immediately. That's correct. You said the next two tax periods, it, so it'll be That's split, my understanding, yes, split into two. But it will be taken care of in, in a single year, That's is that? That's correct. Okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, is this a preliminary to, well, really it's a council question, I get council and village manager, preliminary to having a general policy that if after a certain period of time 
this, this action. I, I understand that this particular resolution is only for these four properties. But that, yes, and I think that that is part of the discussion over the, the ensuing months that we're going to have as far as um, all of the properties in the village that uh, are delinquent in some manner, and, and we're going to try to formulate a new policy and procedure and bring that to council for review and discussion. Um, but these four properties, um, you only have a certain number of years to um, assess them. And these four properties, if we do not assess them oh, now, right. we will not be able to assess them in the future. Okay. And they are owner-occupied. You know, the, the, I think the whole discussion Actually, about how rentals. I rental know at least one is not. But, uh, I mean. Well, there, is it a rental? No. no. Then that means. As, I mean, the person is not living in the house. The person's living somewhere else. But, but the issue is. Whether a renter, whether a renter, is driving up the bills, or whether these are, are bills that were accrued by the, the homeowner, mm -hmm. and if it's not a rental property, the assumption is that the bills were accrued by the homeowner, and the homeowner should be assessed or that amount estate. of money. And I think the next discussion about rental renters is is a lot more difficult because there's privacy issues potentially there's notification <laughs> issues to property owners we didn't want to get into that because it there is a much broader discussion um, and I know what you're saying I mean it, it 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 certainly appears that we would be going down a path I don't know that this locks us into a path this, no, this is I mean one, I think it makes sense to go down that right. path. but but this I mean this is one action yeah. that we're not necessarily locked into um, for well, I mean, we're certainly locked into fairness, and we want to treat right. everybody fairly. Uh, what we need is a, a clear and transparent, here's what will happen, what we'll do first, here's what will happen second, right. here's the time frame, and if it's not paid by this time, this is how the village will handle it. That's really fairer for everybody if we can have that very clearly spelled out. Um, uh, but it's, it is, it's, it's kind of a big task, especially as you move between... Uh, owner occupied and rental properties. Mm -hmm. And Patty, what kind of a notification have these four homeowners received? Um, they are required by law to receive a certified letter that is sent to them. Um, once they receive that letter, they have a certain period of time, which I believe is 20 days, to either pay that bill with the village or make arrangements, some type of payment arrangement, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, we did have <coughs> one property owner that took advantage of that. Right. Um, if uh, once they got that letter, they, if they do not pay or make arrangements by the end of that time period, um, then that's the final notification that they get, okay. and it gets assessed. But the letter specifically says that it has to be paid by this date in this amount, or it become it gets assessed to your property tax. And that's the September fifth date that's in the resolution. Uh, actually, the date in the letters may be sooner than that. Okay. Um, but that's the date that we have to have it to the auditor by. And then that, just to clarify, so that means then they would not be assessed the 10% That's if correct. They pay. If, they, if they pay it before we assess it, then they do not have to pay the additional 10%. So they still have another, potentially between now and, and early September, if they came to the village. That's correct. That's and, correct. And I'm assuming normal notification, late due notification, I mean that, that there have been notifications going out all along that there are past due right. bills. And these, these are from 2006. Hmm. These delinquent accounts are from 2006. That's why we have to do them this year because we're coming up on the end of the statute of limitations. So they were not recently accrued. Okay. Any other comments? I'd like to hear from citizens. Any other comments from council? Or just any citizen comments, Ellen? Ellen Hoover, and uh, really I have questions, not comments at this point. I didn't hear electric mentioned. Is electric part of that list, water, sewer, trash, storm sewer? I don't believe electric is, and I think that there's a statute that says that we can't do the electric. I might be wrong about that, and I'm happy to check it for you and get back with you. I'm just, I, well, it's curiosity at this point because I'm late to hearing the discussion so your understanding is that electric has to be at least has to be treated differently that's correct okay hmm. okay 
And you've answered, I, I really appreciate all the questions because most of the questions I came prepared to ask, you've answered. Uh, but I want to restate something I think you said, and you tell me if I'm right or, or misunderstanding, that you don't really have a policy now, but you plan to move toward a policy. And that policy about delinquent bills will address not just residential, but I assume commercial. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we'll address utilities, including electric, which you didn't say, but I'm making an assumption. Is that all mm -hmm. correct? It, it should address all um, utilities. The only caveat I will put on that is depending on what the ORC says about the electric utility. Sure. Okay. But yes, other, all other utilities will be addressed in that, and electric will be included if we are allowed to include it. So, so at this point, my only comment would be that we have plenty of notice to give input. Um, uh, I am business partners with me represent Millworks, so we would want input on that, and I would want input for other property we own. Um, I don't personally have rental, uh, residential rentals. But I'm sure other people care. So when that policy is being developed, I think it's the time to give that input, and that's, I'd like to do that. I would, and I, I'm sure there are different issues with residential, with commercial real um, real estate than, than residential. So um, it would be definitely to at least have both issues, both things addressed, I think would be important. Right. Okay, and my understanding is we won't be just inventing this whole cloth. We're going to look at other communities' right. policies and uh, see how they handle it and uh, try to craft something that will work for us based I, on best practices. We've actually already started trying to find information. Right. I, I, I've asked Melissa for a, kind of a spreadsheet of how other communities handle it so that we can really see kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I assume there are communities now doing what? is proposed here. Right. Probably more doing that than what we're doing. <laughs> oh. We're probably the only one doing what we're not doing. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. Any other comments? Okay. Um, Council, any other comments? Questions? Let's Let's call the roll on this one. Okay. Oh, did Sandy? Oh, oh, Sandy, I'm sorry. I have one quick question. Um, I'm Sandy Love, and I just wondered, is it public who, what these properties are? I mean, the way you were talking, it sounded as if there was a list somewhere. It, I didn't see a list. I, we didn't get a letter, so I assume we are not on it. But um, I just wondered about that. Mm -hmm. Um, is there, you mean, is there a list of all the delinquent properties or just the ones we're talking about? The ones today? that you're talking about. Yeah. Judy has. Okay. Yeah, and there were some on the table. Oh, I guess they were gone by the time we got there. I, okay. Thanks. Anything else before we call the vote? Judy, would you please call the roll? <coughs> yes. Sims. Yes. Hausch. Yes. Asklund. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Thank you. That was. We're done with legislation. I like that. <laughs> um, uh, next, we have citizens' concerns, and this is uh, for anything um, of concern to citizens that is not on the agenda already. And you need to come up, uh, state your name, and um, come on up. Hello, I'm Deborah McGee. And I'm here to be a voice for the eight Bradford pear trees that are on the chopping block downtown. I see them as being really crucial to the ambiance of our beautiful downtown area. I love seeing people sitting in the shade underneath them and talking. And I understand that they're, the problem with them is that they uh, are invasive species in invasing our, uh, invading our beautiful uh, Glen Helen, which concerns me. But Maybe I'm not understanding, but uh, aren't there other trees and plants in this village that are also capable of invading Glen Helen? And if so, why are we picking on these eight particular trees that are so beneficial to us? Um, also, and then if we remove them and then find out we've still got Bradford pears invading the Glen, we've meanwhile lost a valuable asset. <coughs> I'm wondering why, too, if the Glen, we have such a beautiful, pristine Glen, can't we just 
budge a little bit on how pristine it is so that we have the trees that uh, give us so much joy downtown. The ones uh, that have been already removed and then there have been some planted in front of the winds. And I don't know about you, but uh, I find them pretty boring and certainly no shade. It's really hot walking along there now where the minute you get past them, it's nice and shady in the rest of the downtown area. And there's been some talk of um, if they would be removed, instead of removing them all at once, maybe removing just a, a couple at a time and seeing how that goes and just not stripping them all away as a, as a, in one fell swoop. Uh, I do think they're just so beautiful in all seasons. Um, maybe they're not native, but they're just lovely trees. I, I think they've been there for 40 years. So I'm here just to speak as a voice and say if there's any way we can keep that beautiful area of downtown the way it is, I'd, I'd sure love to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Other comments? <coughs> Carol? Yes. I'm Carol Cobbs, Yellow Springs, and I have a question first before I make a comment. It, it's my understanding that she said that all of them are going to be cut down at one time. Is that correct? Okay. On, on, the, on, the, on the east side of the street. We're only talking about the east side of the street between Dino's and Glen Street. That's and right. yeah. What about the other side? Is They're not being done this year. But that side is not being done this year. Okay. Because it, ironically, I read an article in, I think it was this past Sunday's uh, parade, naming the best main streets and little towns. <coughs> and without a doubt, every one of them had lovely trees. And they were saying that that's the draw <coughs> for a lot of people. In fact, at one of our meetings some time ago, last year maybe, we had a couple of out of town people come to speak to that and said that they don't know if they feel the same way about uh, Yellow Springs. And I was hoping, uh, like the lady that talked, that maybe it wouldn't have to be done all at one time. But my question is, do those few trees, they've been the only problem, I mean, they've been the ones that have been the problem for the Glen? That doesn't no, seem... That's not the that's not the logic. We can okay, talk. We can I talk after like. once everybody's let's, had a right. chance to talk. Okay. We can discuss it a little okay. bit. That'd be fine. Well, I guess my opinion would be that I would hate to see them uh, gone, having grown up in town and they're being there forever. I would not want any harm done to any other situation or the sidewalks. But I was hoping there might be a different way that that could be approached because they really are beautiful. And if you get a chance to look at that parade magazine and it talks about those main streets and what makes small cities like ours um, a very significant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Other comments? Uh. Hello. My name is Uta Schenk. My son was killed last year. And I have a question about police procedure as far as SWAT in our village. I know that's been in discussion possibly behind the scenes. It was mentioned in the newspaper last week. I think some of you are questioning how we got to be a member of it. And uh, I know several people had commented they felt it was a good idea. I just wanted to say, with everything that's going on in this country right now, especially with the school shootings, I understand that everyone's edgy and that people have to have a certain amount of firepower available when an emergency occurs. I would say that our son's situation wasn't such a situation and I think the SWAT team and all the vehicles made it worse and he basically was shot in his own home and I want this village to understand that it's caused a terrible, terrible sorrow for the family, his two children. No one was allowed to speak. No one was allowed to negotiate. Major Keller, who was in charge of the SWAT, and Spicer, who was put in place, made a lot of mistakes. They stand by their word. They stand behind protocol. 
I'm here to say this village needs to stop this. And if we look at Ferguson and the shootings around this country right now, the way these vehicles and this kind of SWAT is used against citizens when it isn't necessary, we need to be ashamed of ourselves for allowing it. We need to stop. And I hope the village council will address it and I hope our fellow citizens will address it. Thank you. Thank you, Buddha. Buddha. Um, I, at, at, first of all, um, our, our, our sorrows go to you, go out to you. First time I've heard that from anyone here. And um, we did decide at the last meeting that there will not be, we will not have an officer involved in SWAT. We are, we are going to have discussions within the community. Um, the Human Relations Commission is putting together some discussions, some community discussions about community policing. Um, and mm -hmm. until that happens, until it's discussed, um, we asked Patty to note to, to not for us not to be involved. Um, there was one officer involved for a short period of time, and that officer is no longer with RPD and is no longer. Um, so we are no longer involved, and we will not be placing another officer back with SWAT. I, you know, we will discuss it. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to presuppose to say until we have the discussion and until council discusses and we get staff comments I'm not going to sit here and say we won't be I, I would I would find it surprising um, that we would be but we're not ready to say that we're not make ready to make that definitive statement at this point it is something that we will discuss though and um, I, I think your observations are, are good ones Um, other, um, Matt, Matt, and then Chris, he's Chris back okay. there. I'm Matt Carson, and I'm also here to talk about um, the demilitarization of the police in particular. Um, currently, we're, we have someone who was just sent to get trained on SWAT, um, and I'm glad that you're saying that we're going to be um, not supporting those kinds of measures. I'd also like to see um, a way of making sure that SWAT teams don't end up in our village. Even if one of our officers is not SWAT, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be SWAT teams in our village, right? Um, we're also involved in the drug task force. I think that that's a huge mistake and we just have ourselves removed from that. Um, and we also need to recognize that the majority of calls that police departments um, go out on are domestic disturbances. Call, like, you know, so what that means is it's, you know, problems within families. Uh, and so we end up sending guys with guns into situations with problems with families, like with Paul's death. Um, you know, and, and I'm asking you guys to imagine, like, what if we dump that kind of money into social workers and what would have happened if a social worker had showed up that day you know those, those are the kinds of questions that we need to be asking ourselves um, and finally I think it's incredibly important that we actually have some sort of police oversight committee at, at this point HRC doesn't seem to be uh, fulfilling that role um, so unless we have some sort of committee with teeth you know not just sort of a let's get along but something that actually has enforcement power over the police department, I think that we're facing some some real problems, and we'll continue to be facing these problems. And historically, we've seen this happen over and over. So, thank you for your time. Thanks, Matt. Chrissy. Chrissy Cruz. I want to say that I'm glad that last council meeting we decided not to be part of SWAT anymore, especially considering what's been going on in police departments around the country lately. Um, I have a concern that we also um, remove ourselves from the drug task force. From my understanding, no one's been serving on the drug task force for some time, but one of our officers just got back from two weeks of training to be on the drug task force. It costs us quite a bit of money to participate in the drug task force, and considering we're running at a deficit in our budget right now, I don't think it's very responsible to continue that program, especially since they use a lot of the similar task tactics as the SWAT team does. And I also, with Matt Carson, agree that we need to have some kind of an oversight. Frankly, I was somewhat disappointed to find out that HRC no longer participates in any issues that citizens have with the police department, because going back through minutes of previous meetings in previous years, I understand that that was a pretty important focus of that commission. And I'd like to see at least some oversight brought back to that commission, if not something else, another body um, in place where citizens feel they have some recourse. Thank you. Thanks, Chrissy. Other comments? Sue? <coughs> uh, I 
I'm Sue Abnadura. <clears throat> and since it came up uh, about the Drug Task Force, I would like to register my support for our participation in that task force. I think it has helped the entire region deal with what is a serious regional problem. And we can't just say, we're Yellow Springs, we don't want to be part of the world, because the drug trafficking that's in the region is also in Yellow Springs. And a coordinated way of dealing with it, I think, is necessary and important, and I think we should continue to par participate in that task force. Secondly, I think that putting citizens who are unelected representatives of nobody but themselves over with supervisory or authority over our local police department is very wrong. We have a village manager, we have a council that have the authority over the police department. It is their responsibility. And I don't think that any citizen who's not been trained in the legal issues, who one doesn't know what their policing philosophy is, I don't think citizens should be having any authority over the police force other than what we have through our village representatives and the village manager who directly supervises the police force. So I would urge you to be very careful. I remember several years ago there was a long discussion at a council retreat about the uh, wish of the then Human Relations Commission to deal with policing issues. And my understanding at that time was that the legal counsel said that you must not, you should not uh, do such a thing because citizens cannot, should not be uh, in positions of authority over village employees. That's your job and we expect you to do your job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sue. <coughs> Other comments? Uh, Carol <coughs> Hobbs. Um, I'm not sure if I heard everything that uh, Chrissy said, but my understanding wasn't that there would be a group that would have authority, and if I'm wrong, she can correct me or you can, but more that that there ought to be other people that at least might be able to take into, into consideration a lot of the problems that we feel do persist, and a lot of citizens do. And my own opinion is that sometimes council does not listen to what we feel. Um, and I don't know why, because enough people have been down to voice their opinions about some problems. So there needs to be something done. I think you have a lot more angry people in this town um, about the police department and the way it's going, and it's not so community center. And Lord knows, I, I know we can't have a Chief McKee back again. I wish we could, but we need to at least try to follow in that vein. And I personally do not think that's happening. And I think it's going to get worse instead of better. And I think it's because people aren't listening. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Other comments? I think, you know, as, as I said, when at some point in the conversation, when we started this discussion, we are, we have asked HRC, we did decide at the last meeting to ask HRC to, to establish a, a process of community discussion. So they're going to be working with setting up meetings, um, coordinating it with the village manager, with the police department, um, finding mediators, finding facilitators. So that, that will be happening is my understanding. Brian may report on it briefly during, during the commission discussion. But that is something, and I think all of the concerns that have been mentioned tonight can be, are things that we can consider and will be part of that discussion. Yeah, and I, I will just say at our last HRC meeting, we started that discussion about a community forum. Um, I do also want to mention, though, that uh, starting at the end of last year, uh, we began inviting uh, the chief and the sergeants to come to HRC meetings, uh, which are public meetings. And, you know, we also invited citizens to come and 
and have a more informal communication. Um, no citizens have ever come to those meetings. Um, and you know, I would like to iterate that uh, that is a great opportunity to get questions answered and have conversations um, face to face. Um, how, how can the public know when the police chief or someone from the police department will be at HRC? We could add that to, I, I, we did add that to one of the notices, um, but we can add that to the notices whenever that happens in the paper. So we can make sure that that happens. Yeah, I, I think that would be good because that is a venue that could be available to people and it would be good if they no, but my recol I, my recollection of the discussion that Sue was referring to was that the problem was there was a desire for people to be able to speak to HRC as a public body and anonymously, and at a public meeting nothing is anonymous, right? You are here and you you have to give your name, and there was no really way around that. Um, that that and so. That, that's my, at least that's my recollection. And, well, and from the other side of things, there are due process issues of, of, this, of the, the officers that are being accused having representation and being able to respond to accusations. So there's really two sides to the issue of, um, and, and it, it's just, it's kind of a legal quagmire. Um, and it's something that we need to discuss and we need, you know, it, it Hopefully there is some sort of a resolution. I don't know that HRC is the resolution, but I think that it is certainly something that would require um, advice from legal counsel and some real thought put into it, to, that it would be um, equitable, fair, um, impartial. Jerry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to add on to what Lori said. Uh, when I was on uh, HRC and the village rep to HRC, we did have quite a few folks that did come forward with complaints. But what happened was we had to start televising and no one wanted to stand up and, and have their name and so forth uh, going forward. And that kind of squashed the uh, community's participation as it related to, to the police. So. It, except that that is also that practice is what our legal counsel correct, told us we correct. should not be doing right. that that you cannot publicly uh, we can't put our staff in a, in a situation of being publicly accused without having due process and the right to respond patty could probably address this better than i in her her position but um i think that um and with her experience but um, I, it, it obviously requires a lot more discussion. It's not something we're, we're probably well versed enough in tonight to really get into depth. In, but your, your thoughts? The only thing that I'd like to say is if you have a complaint against any village employee, and this is not just the police department, but any village employee, and you bring it to me, I'm going to take it seriously. Um, I'm going to investigate it. I'm going to look at all the circumstances, and I'm not going to leave you out of the loop. Um, you know, I can't promise you what the outcome will be because I don't know what your complaint is or what the circumstances were, but I will take it seriously. Um, there are due process things that are required of us as a government to our employees, uh, and we have to abide by those. Some of them are in the personnel manual, and some of them are just law. Um, so there are some things we can and can't do, but they do have the right, one of the rights that they do have through due process is to uh, be able to, uh, re to face their accusers, for lack of a better word, and uh, to respond to that. So, you know, at that point it becomes your decision whether you want to come forward with your complaint or not, but if you do choose to do that, I will take it seriously. Um, and uh, Chrissy. I just wanted to say real quick that the chief is supposed to come to our next HRC meeting. September 4th. Yes, September so 4th. if any citizens would like to address that, that would be a time to show up. Yes, Thank chief, you, Chris. chief and I will both be there. Yeah, and just to add to that, that is when we will uh, have a more formal discussion about what that community forum uh, will look like. Thank you. Diane. Okay, Diane, Diane first and then. I 
Ann Chittister. I just wanted to clarify, I think there's some confusion. We are still a member of SWAT. Um, when I met with the head of SWAT about a month ago to interview him about SWAT, he told me that we are one of five contributing members, municipalities that are members. And at the time, we didn't have an assigned officer because that assigned officer who was on SWAT for a year had resigned. Um, and I understand Consul has decided not to assign someone until the public discussion. But I just wanted to clarify that whatever step needs to be taken, we haven't yet taken that step, I don't right. think. Um, right. But I appreciate that the discussion is coming. And, All right. Thank, thank you. you, Diane. Appreciate the so, information. Just, just come up. If, if, you, just, if you don't mind. You know what those television guys are like. <laughs> yeah, Paul, Paul will be really mad if you don't come up. <laughs> I just believe that it is part of Sunshine Law that agencies of a government must publish their agendas and their minutes. Now, I think the website does have them if you go searching on the website, but they're often out of date. They're often not there. No, citizens really do have a difficult time keeping up with what's happening on our behalf by village commissions and boards. So perhaps you would, again, remind those people of those commissions that they have a responsibility to keep the information flowing to the whole citizenry, not just a closed little group. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Um, I'll don't doesn't look like we, ha we have any other comments so um, um, I, I would just like to say something about both issues that oh, were I raised yeah, we okay, um, I, I think to the degree that people in the community fear the police it doesn't help the community and I know that there are some segments of the community where that is the case it certainly isn't I don't think what the council wants or the police want and so I think whatever we can do to be having better communication uh, within the community and and between the police department and the community um, it's it's going to make the police job easier and it's going to make the citizens more accountable and able to to serve their own needs and to work with the police so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to whatever um, happens with HRC or the mediation program and I'd also be happy to be involved in that and so on. Before you say something about the treats, Patty was going to address the Zini Avenue streetscape in her report. Do we want to just go ahead and yeah, talk not? about that now? Okay. Uh, looking for the right paper. And Nick is well, here. Well, if she's, if she's got something to say yeah, about go ahead. it, then. No, okay. Well, I mean, I wasn't on council when this was put into place and I just wanted to, an, to understand what what the plan was and then what kind of trees are going to be going in. Well, and you should have at your at your place a brief report and I did put some out on the table um, earlier. And this essentially what this does is it explains the, the scope of the project, uh, the relative timeline and a little bit of the history as far as what I could put together because I also wasn't here at the, uh, when this was initiated. Um, and it was begun as a, a simple sidewalk repair project. Uh, it kind of grew into a larger project of uh, becoming a, a streetscape or innovation project with new sidewalks, um, new trees, new street lights, and bearing the electrical conduit. Um, the next phase of the project is out for bid right now. The bids will be opened on Friday. Um, I will bring a recommendation to council at the September 2nd meeting as far as awarding a contract and the work will start as soon as possible thereafter. Um, it should be a, within a week or two of awarding the contract. Um, and the part of the problems are that the sidewalk is buckling um, because of the roots of the trees and the, some of the roots are even getting into the basements of some of the adjacent buildings and, and causing damage there. Um, the trees are being topped because of the electric lines. The um, light poles are um, not all matched and some of them are deteriorating fairly badly. Um, of course, there is the issue of the, the pears being considered invasive and causing issues in the Glen and potentially other places throughout the village. Um, 
I did find out, and this was a question that Diane had asked me, and, and I promised her I would get her the answers. There are three cultivars uh, being uh, used as replacement trees. One is the European hornbeam, one is the lacebark elm, and I was unable to find the name of the third cultivar, but these were uh, three cultivars that were um, chosen um, with the input of the tree committee. And um, so it's not just going to be one type of tree. There will be three different trees, and they are cultivars. They're not native trees. Um, but uh, the electrical conduit would be, will be buried so that these trees do not have to be topped uh, in the future. They can grow. They can, they'll probably have to be trimmed up to keep them you know, away from the buildings a little bit, but they won't have to be topped to keep them out of the electric lines. Um, and they'll be a little bit more conducive to being the street. And we're also expanding the size of the tree box or the root box that right. they're in. So, so right now, the roots are, are just heaving up the sidewalk. And, and that's exactly, this project started as a sidewalk project. And um, it, it grew into a larger project. And again, I mean, I, I don't want to reiterate what, what um, everything that Patty just said, but all of the steps fit together. All of the steps of why we're doing it fit together. The trees are being topped, they're unattractive, they're, um, they're not shaped in a way that is, that is really conducive. We bury the electric line, then we allow the trees to actually grow the way they're supposed to grow. And we don't have to top them, we don't have to trim them. Now the one thing I would like to look at, and we actually, Patty and I met with Nick today about another subject and we talked a little bit about this, is maybe looking at more native trees. I mean, I you know maybe we can look at, at more interesting trees, trees that might be a little bit larger. So I would definitely be open to broadening recommendations on tree species that are put in. And the other thing is that these trees are um, they typically live. And maybe Nick knows more about this than I do, but uh, about 25 years, and they've been in since the. It's, they're like 80s, they're about years 40 now. years old. So they are, um, they're not dead and they're not dying, but they're, they are uh, reaching the end of their, their life. And in order to redo everything kind of at once, and in fact, we actually did break it into two parts. I mean, originally the argument was just do that whole side of the street. It's, it's a lot less costly to do all of it at once, get one crew in there at one time and do the whole thing and bury all the lines at once so that you're not, I mean, the, the whole idea was not to um, do one part of the job and then have to rip up what you just did in order to do another part of the job. It, 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 you just can't do it. And these trees won't last forever. Um, they're not designed, they're, they're the living creatures. Um, and so I think it's going to be better but I realize there is some sadness. I love the look of them, especially in the spring. They're, the flowers are beautiful. But it, we didn't make, in other words, the decision wasn't strictly because they were invading the glen, so we have to get rid of these eight trees. <laughs> there are many more of these trees around town. It was, it was more to do with everything that needed to be done and the fact that they were very, they're, they're nearing the end of their life. Nick, did you, yeah, please. Um, hi, Nick, Buddhist Director Glenn Helen. Uh, I'm actually not sure I have that much to add to uh, what I think has been a productive conversation already. Um, but I will say that uh, as somebody who, who loves trees, who maybe not too long ago would have been able to stand before you and recite the entire uh, script of the Lorax, um, <laughs> um, I can say that in a, uh, in a village setting, uh, that trees are something that are, are managed, then that there's a whole school of, of urban forestry that, that we need to understand and respect in terms of the trees within our built environment. One way or another, uh, if we don't manage the trees, they will uh, exert consequences on us by dropping branches on cars or, or other, um, or other uh, challenges that come with, with heaved sidewalks or, or not taking care of them. Um, I, I agree with the sentiment that we should try to pursue uh, native species when possible. Oftentimes the challenge that we run into with native species is they're going to drop 
fruit or um, or something else that makes them messy for a, a populous uh, streetscape, and oftentimes they grow uh, too large for for the limitations of, of the uh, the root box that we'd be providing for them. That doesn't mean there aren't places that we could look, and I I would encourage council to uh, uh, dive deep and see if there's something that. Uh, we can look at that does grow in in Ohio and southwestern Ohio that would contribute to the Ohioness uh, of the Yellow Springs uh, streetscape. I would also strongly encourage council to think about a management plan uh, for these trees so that over time, uh, respecting the idea that that we because of the electric project, there's lots of reasons to get a good fast start. That over time. Uh, replacement would be um, of, of the next round of trees would be staggered so that this becomes uh, a, a one-time pulse to get rid of a, a, uh, trees that are both causing problems uh, in terms of the local management of the, the sidewalk and power and in terms of their invasive species uh, and see that over time we'd go in and you know every five years replace 10% of the trees, for example. I think I had another point. Oh, invasive species. The best time to deal with an invasive species is before it becomes firmly established. Uh, and I wished we had the presence of mind to deal with honeysuckle in 1965 <laughs> rather, than, rather than start our attack on it in 2000. Uh, and uh, the, the challenge with invasive species is they have the cap capacity to grow uh, and expand geometrically, and we want to get ahead of that curve. And, and uh, <coughs> uh, calorie pears, of which Bradford pears are the most aggressive example, are a species where we still have time to keep that tree from taking over. Uh, and uh, to the extent that we don't manage it, we will lose that opportunity. Thanks, Ned. Uh, any other comments before we move on? Okay, thank you. Um, next <coughs> item on the agenda is uh, the Home Inc. C Street update. I see Emily Seibel has come in. Um, do you have? Do you want to start the conversation, Patty, or should we just? Um, <coughs> we had a meeting. Uh, Mary Ann, Jerry, uh, myself, uh, with Emily, Chris, and uh, Jason and Johnny um, from the village. Um, we heard out a few of the details as far as, um, you know, the responsibilities on the costs. Um, the village will be paying to put in the new water line with a new service to each home. Uh, home Inc. will be paying to put in the sewer laterals and also running the, excuse me, the um, water lateral out to the service where, where we're going to stuff it out for them. Um, the fence issue, um, it was generally <coughs> became the consensus after we all read the, the option to purchase that the fence is meant to be a demarcation of the edge of the property and that it not, does not necessarily need to be a man-made fence but could in fact be some kind of a natural barrier <coughs> that shows the edge of the property and there were several things that were discussed. Um, it was also um, determined that the option to purchase does not specify a time frame for putting that in. And so um, we left it for now. Uh, Emily and Chris were going to go back and look at what they had, think about the different options, and then maybe come back to us with some, some requests or some suggestions or you know, possibilities that we could then mutually agree upon. Um, Emily, do you have? <coughs> sure. I just, hi, I'm Emily Seibel. I'm the director of Home Inc. And um, yeah, I think we we thought it would make sense to wait until the Tecumseh Land Trust uh, grant for removing the invasive species came through since part of the lots are in the wooded area and it wouldn't really make sense to put up a barrier and <coughs> all of the invasives up and to the barrier were removed and then there are invasives ready to continue invading <laughs> on the other side right. of the barrier so uh, we're going to revisit it see what happens with a grant revisit it at that time maybe make a, a some kind of volunteer project out of it and then i think the confusion that we we sorted out in the meeting was related to the the sewer taps or 
the, the, the laterals from where the sewer line is to the edge of the street. But we've figured that out. Homing's going to pay for it. And I just want to thank everyone who came to the groundbreaking ceremony. Yeah. It was really great to get the project going. And um, I don't have anything else. I That's wanted to question. congratulate you on that, on the groundbreaking, and it was a nice ceremony. It was nice to see the family, and uh, so good luck. Yeah, construction starts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a really great event. So yeah. if you weren't there, you missed it. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything else anybody wants to add? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Beaver Dam update. Um, <laughs> I know this is getting kind of old to hear this, but I'm still waiting on some information. Um, John Eastman did some further uh, calculations. Uh, hopefully we can reduce the size of the pipe from what it was initially and still um, do what we need to do for both the beavers and the, the village as far as the detention pond. Uh, and this is the detention pond on Glass Farm. Glass Farm. Just on King people, Street, right off of King Street. Amazingly, people don't pay attention to every single <laughs> meeting we have. So this may be the first time that people out there are hearing about the Beaver Dam. So uh, 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 yeah, and um, so John has uh, John Eastman has done some further calculations, and he has sent those cal calculations to Bill Bebko uh, for his review and input. And um, we are waiting for Bill to come back to us with his thoughts on that. But what we're looking at is in reducing the size of the pipe to potentially 12 inches instead of 36. And hopefully that will happen, uh, but uh, we have yet to determine that that will actually be the sufficient flow. We think it will, but we're waiting on the final calculations. I have a little bit to add to. First, I'd like to acknowledge all the people that have been working on this um, because it is, uh, it's a it's a somewhat complex issue of of um, trying to um, have um, a, a site be a naturalized site with these animals and continue to function as a detention basin. So I wanted to acknowledge Kent Bristol to begin with for calling a meeting, and all of the people, including Bill Bebko and Jerry uh, staff, who came to that meeting, and. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge Vicki Hennessy, who contacted uh, a consultant in Massachusetts, Mike Callahan, who then talked with John Eastman and sent, uh, uh, well, actually, Vicki bought a DVD. We've shown it to John. I I've seen it. We've shown it to John. John sent it to uh, Jason to look at, too. So um, there have been a lot of people that have been involved in this, and I'm very excited about it and appreciate all the input that people give them. Okay. Any other com any comments from citizens? Okay. Um, next item on the agenda is new business. Um, Tecumseh Land Trust proposal for Kenan, <coughs> Ohio funds. Um, we've had a couple of meetings with, uh, with Krista McGaw from Tecumseh Land Trust about this project. There is a, a summary of the project in our packet. Um, so I would like to ask Krista to come up and uh, present her proposal. You found a map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm sorry, and it's very map. concise on one piece of paper. I, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't and have colorful. maps for everybody. I did have a map that we put <coughs> together out of several, several smaller pictures, so this one's a little bit better. but. Um, uh, I'm Krista McGough, Executive Director of the Council Land Trust. It's always a pleasure to be here. I uh, like working with the village because the village likes to make plans about, about green space. And certainly one of the discussions that we've bounced around for really a few years now is um, whether there could be some restoration work done right over here on the Yellow Springs Creek. Um, this is uh, especially uh, a possibility that's near and dear to our hearts because we've been so invested in working on protection of the Glen. We started that nine years ago and uh, we're going to finish it up very soon, uh, just hopefully in the next couple of months. So um, not only has that project ended up including the preservation, which was our initial hope for it, 
but there actually has been some preservation uh, aspects that have been added to it uh, by, by Nick and his staff. And it's just, it's a wonderful thing. And, you know, creeks like land really know no boundaries. Uh, it, you know, the, there's landowners who have rights with, and responsibilities with respect to land, but um, we would just love to see the whole swath of creek protected and basically managed in a very basic, uh, habitat manner similarly so um, what there's a lot of things that kind of happen for example with the uh, lovely little amphitheater that I guess was a WPA project down there that um, probably requires some deliberation over time it just it is a very interesting little little piece of our history here um, the piece that that we are interested in with this project is potentially using clean Ohio dollars that are going to be pretty ready, readily available for the next two years to uh, purchase a permanent conservation easement on the land and also to um, do the restoration work that's really rather major. And the, the main culprit in this instance really uh, that is very difficult to deal with is Ilanthus or Tree of Heaven. And if you They're look at the awful. creek basically from either side, it kind of looks like a walnut branch with leaves going either way. Um, and it's it's important to treat it with just the, the right thing at the right time. Yes. And so here we're also looking at the homey site beginning to, to get worked on. And so um, just trying to figure out how strategically to make this work. So it's good for the Glen, it's good for the, this particular property. And it certainly will, will make things, um, I think, prettier just at the entryway to the village, which has definitely been something we've been talking about for a few years now. So so we um, are hoping that um, if the village is interested in pursuing this, that we would be able to work with Glenn Helen to do that very basic maintenance, that removal of the ailanthus, uh, or you know, we would figure out sort of how to break down that oversight of that upfront stuff, but make sure to do it in a way that's really consistent with their stewardship, and um, then try to work with them in some way um, to create some kind of mechanism for ongoing maintenance. So um, that doesn't mean um, taking over of existing mown lawns. That really just means in the natural area, trying to figure out how to keep those invasives gone, uh, handle that effectively. And uh, once you know that you've been successful with removing them, it, it's not going to require a whole lot of time every year, probably a few days to do that, that basic work with the invasives and potentially some planting of some native plants. But it's surprising what comes back, really, once you, you get some of those major, I mean, you can just see how much light that Ilianthus is sucking up. And then there's a good bit of, of honeysuckle in the understory as well. So, um, so basically, we, we've come to the village because of the time frame, uh, October 31st, and I think this was in the piece that was in your board package, or yeah, October mm -hmm. 31st, is the deadline for the uh, Clean Ohio Open Space Fund for our district. Seven, it's $3.7 million for an eight county area, which is actually bigger than that pot of money has ever been before. Um, we don't have to move with it this time. We could also wait for next year. Um, we, there should be another 2.3 million, which, as far as I know, is going to be there <laughs> in a year. Uh, it went into John Kasich's capital bill, with him actually putting it into the bill, and it was passed by the legislature. So I, I think that that really will happen, also. Um, so I, you know, I, I both don't want to rush you, but I also want to say, hey, this is a good time to to get on this, and um, it isn't. You know, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good, perhaps, you know, insofar as you don't have to figure out your whole management plan forever of that property. But um, this is such a timely point with some construction beginning, you know, to, to take care of the big stuff. And we did, uh, Nick and, and Krista and Patty and I did meet today. And, um, you know, I think what Patty, I think, and Chris are going to be working on a timeline of exactly what legislation, exactly what actions council needs to take, and what, you know, if it's going to be an ordinance, if it's going to be a resolution. Um, I'd like to hear from Patty. I mean, my sense is that Patty is um, feels that it probably is something that 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 we can manage um, once we get to that point. Um, right. I in our discussions today. Um, 
what we came up with was that um, perhaps between the Glen, the Tecumseh Land Trust, uh, maybe some other contributors, we could come up with the funds for a professional person to come in uh, for four days a year or something like that, at which point we would give them one village employee to work with that person for that time period in maintaining the area as far as keeping the invasives from returning. Mm -hmm. And I'm comfortable that we as a village can definitely work with that and make that contribution. Um, and there are also some other things we talked about, some other possibilities. Um, as far as uh, you know how to handle it in the for the distant future um, and I think that that's definitely doable um, something like that so uh, you know I'm, I'm happy to work with Krista on that okay and we need a 25 percent match right yeah you do have to have a 25 percent match and it can be in kind time it can be value and I, I think that the the easement value would be a way to to get some match I haven't talked to an appraiser yet and I want to do that probably pretty soon to get at least a ballpark idea about you know what what we would be talking about but um, the the good news is that you can really account for time and um, get paid the prevailing wage for the people who do that initial removal. That's a pretty heavy-duty, high-skilled job to, to take on. Um, the bad news is it, it's limited to two years with a few exceptions. You can, you can, you know, on some sort of um, uh, specific circumstances, you can certainly ask for an extension, and, and that, that's happened a lot of times. Um, but yeah, what we'd want to do is try to work with the village on some kind of long-term uh, mechanism, maybe even like an endowment at the community foundation or something like that might be a way to figure out how to invest some money that would throw off a little money just to keep up with that basic <laughs> maintenance. And it would really definitely relate to the habitat there, you right. know, so it'd be fairly limited, but enough to hopefully really protect that investment on the part of the, the village and <coughs> And it's my recommendation that we just would handle, we would just do, do um, deal with the invasives <coughs> removal right now. I mean, there was some talk about maybe trails or um, a slightly expanded project. I mean, we talk about the amphitheater. At this point, I don't, I don't want to be looking forward to any other projects. I think <coughs> we need to get the area cleared out, see what's back there, and then look to potentially other funding sources. There are trail grants, there are other grant funding and other types of things we could look at but I think that you know between what what home Inc needs to do for C Street and that would have to probably have to be separated off I'm glad Emily talked about the fact that you know that could be a separate project it would need to be because there is easement um, we're gonna have to give the easement or to, to, to Tecumseh we can't do that with private property because part of that will be the private property of the homeowners um, mm -hmm on the C Street property. So we'll have to treat that differently. The homeowners own the house. I think Home Inc. owns the Well, but right. oh, somebody else. Yeah. It's not it's not village property to give. No. So um, but so I think I you know I'd, I'd like to take it in stages but I I am very supportive of the project. I think it's um, so I think at the next meeting I think we have we have plenty of time to get to get all the pieces put together and that's pretty much in Patty and Krista's hands right now to pull the details together of the process. So Krista, you're talking about uh, 50000 for the project is what the yeah, grant? I think, and then to figure out though that sort of follow-up piece about, you know, once you've got it stable in three, four years, hopefully, then how much every year do okay. you have to kind of go back and do? And so that's another piece that I think we want to talk about. And we, you know, it, it would be, um, we, um, some of you guys might be aware, but some of you might not be too. Whenever we take on an, an easement, responsibility for an easement, um, we also get a stewardship donation to an endowment-like fund that generates a little income that pays us every year to go back and monitor that property. Mm -hmm. And we really can't, it's endowment-like in that we could touch the principal if we needed to at some point, if somebody willfully violates an easement and we've got to take them to court. You know, that would be the only circumstance under which we would, we would do that. 
but it generates that little bit of income such that even if TLT, we're in a, a mode of trying to protect more land. Our goal is uh, 50,000 acres in Clark County, 50,000 acres in Green County, and we're like getting close to 24 or something like that all together in both counties right now. So we're in a mode where we're really actively trying to protect property to take on new projects. But at some point, we may have reached that goal, and I, you know, I'm just I can't speak for the future about you know what else would be needed at that point. With that stewardship fund in place, then it it is a backup form of sort of insurance that even if we went out of business, another entity, another land trust, maybe a, a statewide uh, major group of some sort, would be able to get that asset with that responsibility. And those stewardship funds for small properties are generally pretty low, like $5,000 one time ever. But there are land trusts that get stewardship to do maintenance. Yeah. And so we can kind of look to other projects uh, to try to get some numbers around that, um, perhaps by the, by the next council meeting, and talk a little bit about that possibility. So that would be sort of a next piece. Clean Ohio money won't really pay for that piece, but um, it's definitely important to the project. I mean, nobody likes to see money get spent and, and the project not getting maintained. And then in terms of our match, so if, if you're asking for 50, then 12,500 is the village match? Right, right. And, okay, so presuming that the easement doesn't cover that amount, um, I mean, is, is this something that the green space fund could be okay. Could be good. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, and she also did say that that there would be. I mean, we could assign some some staff time. You know, some yeah. some cost. Mm -hmm. um, so there is some staff. I mean, we might get that down to just a few thousand dollars. Right. And they have a protocol. That's one of the things that's great about the Public Works Commission is they've got a very clear protocol. Patty's worked with it before. So you you know, based on your actual salaries, your actual costs, you know, you you can determine how much an hour for different types of staff and that kind of thing. Once you get the award. Mm -hmm. but all during that two-year implementation period so during the two years yeah. and then the stewardship part that they don't we'll fund is after, after. okay right. Nick anything you wanted to add sure. Nick Lutus again um, I'm <laughs> just uh, grateful to Krista and, and Patty uh, for discussing this issue and moving it forward I think it's it's really important for the village this is a uh, a really interesting parcel of land that sits behind this building that um, uh, is I think a negative contributor to the village right now and a negative contributor to the Glen in terms of a, it being a vector for invasive species and it doesn't need to be that way it really it, it, it has a potential to to return to glory as a as a an ecological and cultural asset um, the Glen is uh, happy to be part of the discussion uh, in terms of the immediate management need of removing invasive species, uh, in, in terms of a long-term management need of uh, long-term ecological stewardship. Uh, and, and if it makes sense to look at it this way, uh, to look at the possibility of a fee transfer where, where the Glen would take, or the Glen Home Association would take, uh, title to that area if there's advantages to doing that. So we're happy to have those conversations and, and just think it's important work that you're considering. So council, are we, uh, other questions? Yeah, I, I have a couple questions. There's a, what do you call it, a, um, an in, sort of like an endowment that, that uh, money that goes in for every project. I wasn't clear where the money, that money for this project would come from. Well, um, I mean, it could come potentially from the Green Space Fund. That would that would be possible. Um, and what, how much it, would it be? Well, that's something Nick and I really got to do a little bit of work on. Um, I I think eventually we could get a point to where we would really only need maybe four days a year of somebody skilled working, perhaps with a village employee, maybe with volunteers as well. But um, I, we have to like kind of look at the curve on that and try to to get some better numbers to it. Um, the the five thousand piece we would ask for also for the monitoring uh, part of it, 
that's that's sort 5, of the piece of you would be asking for from the village. Yes. Is that in addition yeah. to the fifty thousand, or is that included already in the total cost of the project? That would be an addition. Okay. Yeah. It's. I don't think that that's looked at as a part of the pro original project cost, but we certainly will talk to our um, staff person for okay. our district and try to yeah. figure out about that. But yeah, that's what we got to figure is this other number that would throw off some money for active management, not just a once a year bot um, monitor. And that's different than the 5,000? Yes. Yeah. And the 5,000 is for what thing? That's, that's what we do. Well, just, it's important to know, you know, because the village is really kind of hopefully benefiting from all this green space that we protected. So for example, you know, Whitehall Farm, uh, Fog Farm, now owned by the Fultons, north of town as a part of the Green Belt. We have gotten stewardship donations that relate to those properties that generate enough money for us to do our annual monitoring, our reporting to mm -hmm. any funders we have for that, yeah, okay. our due diligence, all right? And it's, if you can imagine if you, it would be easy to let slide. We're accredited, so we can't let it slide at all, you know, which is like the wonderful thing about accreditation. But if you let a year go and don't do a visit, okay, you I, I two see. years. Mm -hmm. I know, think I see the distinction between yeah. that activity that you need to do to make sure that things are being done right. and then the actual management activity right. that has to be done. Mm -hmm. It's a different. little different, yeah. Right. yeah. And you might have to throw off a little, you might need more money in that pot to throw off a little bit more. Because our monitoring visits, you know, are less than a half a day, I mean, yeah. usually hour two. Um, I had another question. Karen, you uh, were suggesting or saying that you would like to not see uh, anything about paths or about the what do we call it the amphitheater, amphitheater. Um, and it's clearly that would make this simpler but then what would be the opportunities for us to be getting money for both of those projects well, I, don't, I don't think that what they're doing uh, proposing to do through clean Ohio would limit that in any way in the future you know what we'd want to do is try to identify essentially building envelopes within the area such as the amphitheater you know and with some wiggle room you know just to try to make sure that um, you're for the the dreams that the landowner has you know we're, we're leaving some room for in the easement that's what that's that's the piece of negotiating the specifics that we have to make sure the landowner and the land trust are comfortable with and it looks like though that um, based on your introduction it says you said that um, it's not just that you want to preserve them because they're in the public view but the projects are favored that include public access so that's true. if you put the the trail plan in there I, I suspect that the grant gets more points and that's what that's what grant writing is all about right you want to you want to maximize your points um, and, and so and, and we, we need to come up with I mean we just want to make sure when we write up one of these projects that we're not overselling you know right we really don't want to do something that um, doesn't come to fruition and get points for it um, right we um, may not necessarily need to say very much about public access. There's uh, limited access by appointment only, I think may get you a point or two mm -hmm. um, in their scheme of things. And the, the, the projects that score the best with Clean Ohio Open Space are the ones on a riparian corridor. You know, if you've got that steep elevation going down to a waterway, it's a tributary to the Little Miami State and National Scenic, Scenic River. Uh, it's it is very important for um, water supply for Xenia, you know, as as well as Yellow Springs. So um, there's in mm -hmm. and the you know everything we can do in terms of identification in preparing for the project of plants, animals, potentially habitat for endangered species. We'll, we'll, that's that's why we need some window because we want to try to come up with as much as we can. And actually, I, I will be reaching out to try to find out have people done a bird inventory back there? You know, have I mean, we've got a lot of work that's been done in the Glen, but if there's it, any groups that have have done that, scout troops or you know, that's Antioch. We would we just love to know what what exists because that that definitely can save us some. 
time. My sense is that if you don't have paths and you've, I mean, once you take out all of that honeysuckle and you take out all the tree of heaven and you start being able to see that there's a creek down there, it's likely that people are going to walk through it anyway. And it would be better to have paths than have people just deciding to walk through any, any which way. You might, with paths, um, I um, walked around a little bit with various people here, including George Beery, who um, I think does a very good job, really, in Glen Helen, of limiting access to paths, uh, path, existing paths at times. You know, I mean, it's a tree falls by just moving it a little ways, it makes it kind of hard to get onto a, a new path that somebody's created, you know? So I think there's a little bit of that kind of management that's just mm -hmm. smart to do. Um, whether, would that would that be a part of what the Glen, I mean, if you're talking about a village person and, and um, somebody from, from Glen Helen mm -hmm. four mm -hmm. days a year, you could probably pretty much accomplish <coughs> that, I think. Yeah. So more not creating new ones, but just trying to limit access to the dangerous <laughs> ones. Yeah. Exactly, and I think part of it is that we don't know what's back there, and we don't know what it's going to be. And I think if we if we claim we're going to create this natural walking area, we just may not be able to do it. But I think okay. if we concentrate on the riparian corridor, I think that that will be the key. And, and again, there's there's other pots of money. There's other way, ways we could look at the trail piece of it. I just I don't want to overpromise or or mm -hmm. over extend the project beyond what we can really right. handle. And as Nick said, the trail management is another whole thing mm -hmm. um, beyond just the invasives right. management. But there are some natural paths. I mean, there we are. we walked it pretty easily. There are. It's, it's hard to say how many there are right. just because the honeysuckle is so low down, you know, you kind of get that archway about three, four feet up off the ground. So, um, I, yeah, I, I mean, one of the reasons I think I said something in the, the, my little one pager there about mapping the trails was just to, I, I do think you want to figure out what's there and yeah. maybe just more want to limit the access than that's right. That's really what I was it. thinking about is we mm -hmm. just don't want, as soon as you open it up, you could have. 50 new kind of paths being formed by yeah. people just wanting to walk down and look at the river. Right, and you can have cautionary signage. I mean, this is clearly not a handicap accessible. It's pretty steep. I, one of the walks I had in the last month or so is, was very slippery. It was yeah. soon after Across the rain. top. I had a little um, accident myself, so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. And okay, then, thanks, Krista. Also Krista. mentioned Thank interpretive you. signs <clears throat> as something that would be put up. Yeah, and I think we just need to talk more about what, mm -hmm. what might those be and what how much information do we want people to have. I, um, I think the Historical Society would be really interested in having a little bit about this is where this hotel used to stand or, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think the amphitheater is fascinating, but I mean, that's the landowner's call, really. Mm -hmm. So speaking of that, I, I, that made me wonder with the Historical Society, are the YS schools, would they be a part of this grant or do, is, I mean, does reaching out and talking about educational so opportunities? project learning that they're doing? I mean, there's, there would definitely be some, some opportunities for that. And I mean, to commit to doing, you know, um, involvement with a particular type of class, you know, for right. a limited period of time. Um, I, I think that that's pretty doable. I mean, we have to see how we chunk it down. But okay. um, we um, actually are, we've been using our Miller Fellows a little bit to do projects with the, the kids that come to the youth center here sometimes. And that'd be the kind of thing that once the heavy lifting is done, just the basic maintenance and understanding what, what belongs here and what doesn't belong here, um, I think we might even be able to supply a little bit of volunteer help uh, along that line. So, you know, we definitely, um, there's a number of things we have on the table right now that I think could be project-based learning matches. Um, we're doing, a, for our 25th anniversary coming up in 2015, we're doing an a essay contest on um, living on Earth, finding your home on the land or something to that, to that effect is the title of it. and. Uh, so we're, we're definitely talking to some teachers about that. Cool. That's good. Well, I think that I think you're hearing support. Do we need to t have a motion, or are we okay here? Okay. I, I move that we approve uh, participating in the uh, grant 
Ted comes a land trust grant proposal. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So whenever we'll we'll hear from Patty when it will be on the agenda again. Thanks. Thanks, Krista. Thanks, Krista. Uh, next on the agenda will be um, uh, Marianne's discussion uh, and proposal about the Environmental Commission. Yes. Um, so my understanding is that the Environmental Commission has uh, not functioned for, I'm not sure how many years, a few years. Only a couple, I think, really. A couple years? Yeah, two years, long. I think. A couple years. Rick was the last rep, I think, for mm -hmm. And um, I think recently there have been some uh, issues that have come up that if we had an Environmental Commission, it could participate in working on these issues. I, in this proposal, I've listed some of them, such as um, pursuing the wellhead protection plan and education about that, um, working on a policy about herbicides and pesticides in the village, um, possibly getting involved in, well, not only the land that this grant proposal is talking about, but in looking at all of the public owned land, uh, natural areas, and having input on how to man how to manage the natural areas uh, that the that the village owns, and um, so I looked at the um, powers and duties of the environmental commission, and. Um, I'll just read the first sentence, which says, the Environmental Commission shall advise council on matters affecting the preservation, development, and use of natural and man-made features, condition, man-made feature conditions of the village insofar as beauty, quality, biological integrity, and other environmental factors are concerned. And then there's a list of a number of areas potential areas included that the Environmental Commission can do, including educational projects, surveys, studies, inventories, not only of public land, but private land, coordinating and working with other local groups. For example, it could be Green Environmental Commission, the Tree Committee, the schools, the colleges, uh, YSI, and uh, state and national, having a relationship with state and national organizations and working with planning commission. Um, so it's sort of like, it's, it's sort of like the environmental commission could take over the village. No. <laughs> but, I mean, it can do, it, it's a big, it has it's a, a big broad list, list of broad things scope. it could do. Mm -hmm. So I think that it would make sense that, um, that Council begin with a list of things that we want the Environmental Commission to do. I also would like to see people in the community. I'd like to give this, I think I suggested a couple uh, council meetings. Um, oh, yeah. The bottom. Yep. The, the bottom. number yeah. three timeline. Um, Is that what you're looking for? Yeah, the timeline. Because there are people in the community who may have other ideas of things that the, that they'd like to see the Environmental Commission work on, and I would see there to be a collaborative relationship between the commission and council. In other words, that council would initially say these are five things that we would like the Environmental Commission to work on. We'd like you to look at this, and we'd like you to come back to us saying yes, no, maybe, whatever. Um, what the end, I also uh, would see that the Environmental Commission might have other things that they would come to council for. But that primarily, at least at this point, council would be giving projects to the Environmental Commission. Um, as, as I've thought about the Environmental Commission, what I'm, what I think is that we want people to be on this commission, one who has skills and the wide variety of skills, whether it's land management or uh, uh, knowledge about uh, a biology degree, chemistry degree, geology degree, um, some, some skills and of course interest and time in 
the in areas dealing with the environment and and people are very passionate about the environment so at this while we want people that are passionate but we also we have a lot of different needs that we need to meet I mean we have that village staff that's limited we have financial resources and we have different we have natural areas and areas that people are going to need and we have different ideas about whether we're going to use what kind of chemicals we're going to use so I think that we need to have people on the Commission who are able to work well together and to consider different viewpoints so it on the one hand they need to know something about what they're doing and they need to have a passion they wouldn't be on it otherwise but they also need to be able to listen to other points of view that's the goal for every commission. It <laughs> really is. I, haven't, I haven't found the commission that we want I suppose it is, along. but I'm just very aware in the environment that mm -hmm. people can get very, I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen that tonight. People who are very, hold the trees downtown to be very dear. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is an area, I think, in particular that generates a lot. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm recommending that we re- I don't think we have to do anything. I think I think Judy has to. We have to get people to. Be, we have right. to get five people. Send out a notice. <laughs> Eight, five people. I mean, yeah. In my mind, especially I mean, based on our last meeting, why wait? Yeah. I mean, yeah. go ahead. I mean, we've I, got things. You've got. I think we do. should. We should advertise. Well, is it, it five? Isn't it's five members, but one or is four? A member. Is it four? So, yeah, it citizens? says consists of five members. One member shall be a member of council. Okay, right. so then four. Yeah. Four. So four we just people. Need four people. Um, and I would. I only have one committee and this is an area I, I do have a uh, biology background um, and it is an area that I'm interested in especially I'm interested in um, the public land that we have and how we manage that so um, I, yeah I would like for uh, us to advertise to citizens um, I'm hoping that uh, we can get a number of citizens who have the time and interest to be involved and then I'd like us to have an opportunity to review um, the names maybe have two council people interview uh, people so that we can come up with a group of people that uh, that'll be effective and and of course you don't have to be on the environmental commission to be a resource They're person or to have input can... into it mm -hmm. so it's an opportunity right. for anyone they might not want to be on the commission, but there might be. They might they have might really passion want to about work a particular on the wellhead protection issue. plan, and, 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 yeah. and all all of the commission right all of the commissions had been larger than we constricted them by ordinance because they're all created and established by ordinance. We constricted them back down again. I mean, and this is pretty small, four people. Um, I can see the potential that maybe you know because there is heightened interest in all of these areas that you might get more people. I, I don't know that I you know I want to go back to legislation. Um, already to start to to deal with the size but um, and and did we did we make it a specific size or I thought we at some point were talking about five to nine or something were we or five to seven were we last year you guys talked about that but I don't think we did it we, right but I mean I don't, we don't need to worry about that even right if we now. said it yeah a minimum of minimum of four members something yeah. right. um, with uh, also it's been so, some some more people something. have suggested that we might uh, reach out to the high school have a student you know have a sort of special student member have someone from Antioch College, the college would be great, yeah. or a professor uh, or a staff person at the college it would be great to have mm -hmm. I mean this is an you know I don't and again I don't know how much of this this is an incredibly aggressive list of things hmm. Of accomplishments of things to do, so I think that you know I'm not sh I don't see five people you have to be getting it done honestly. I mean even mm -hmm. even just making recommendations that's a lot's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So I think you know once the commission gets together, um, right? Well, we have to find what it. they may say is we need a task force that's just For working this. on the wellhead protection mm -hmm. plan um, or something like that. That may be what the environmental mm -hmm. commission decides. Does anyone? Does anyone else on council have any thoughts about this? I mean, beyond just 
let's do it, you know, get it going. I would also say that, um, you know, depending on what kind of feedback we get, we should think about alternates. Um, we've already set that precedent for other commissions like the HRC, uh -huh. and I think it's really important because, you know, that is a way we saw with planning commission to make sure you have that quorum so you can make important decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if there's a way for us to kind of overlay that on all our commissions somehow, um, but I think that that's something to keep in mind. Maybe something we look at, um, you can look at, maybe look at and see how we can have maybe a general category of council commissions or something, and instead of going back into yeah. each ordinance and having some kind of general language. And, and the other thing related to, to, to membership is, um, you know, we've, we've kind of gone off and on on how um, how deep we get into interviews, whether we actually even do interviews. So it would be my preference that if we're going to start interviewing for environmental commission, that we set that as a precedent that we are going to be interviewing members for all of our commissions. I, it doesn't make sense to me that we're interviewing one commission and not another. Right. So if, if that's, that's something we've talked about and we've practiced in the past. Yeah, it just um, kind of stopped for some reason. Right, so if that's, you know, that's something going forward that I would like to suggest. Um, one other thing that occurs to me is that um, there would probably be some interface uh, between the Environmental Commission, not just with the Planning Commission, but with like the Arts and yeah, Public, Art Commission. Public Arts Commission on Sure. Public lands. lands. So. Definitely. Right. Do we want to hear? Is there anything? Uh, out there? Citizens, any comments? Thoughts? Okay, thank you. Great. <laughs> um, so, Judy, you know what you need to do? I do. She loves putting those ads in the paper. <laughs> uh, now it's time for Patty's report. I think we've, we're done with most of it. <laughs> we've, we've covered part of it already. Um, Council had a request. Uh, prior to my arrival um, for us to consider placing a stop sign at the intersection of High and Herman Streets. Um, I have looked at the intersection myself. Uh, Chief Pettiford has looked at it. Village staff members have looked at it. Um, after talking to everybody involved, we have a recommendation that we think will um, solve the issue of people cutting the curve a little too tightly and, and potentially causing accidents. Um, one thing that we would like to do is, uh, we will do, is repaint the striping on the road to delineate the, not only the center line, but potentially the side line so that people have a clearly defined um, driving lane. The second thing is, uh, if, if you're coming on, if you're coming down Herman to High, there's a yield sign which is currently obscured mm -hmm. by bushes. We're going to trim that back but there is no sign coming down High Street to make the turn, the left turn onto Herman. And we want to place a sign there um, so that if you're coming down High, you see this sign that says, there's a curve coming up, stay on your side of the road, something you know brief that you can put on a sign that lets people know they need to stay on their side of the road as they're approaching that intersection so that they they do what they're supposed to do and stay on their side of the road. We think those three things taken together will probably alleviate the problem. If it doesn't, council can always go back and consider the stop sign again, but that's how we'd like to start mm -hmm. the, the process. Sounds good. Um, we have a problem with the trash cans along Xenia Avenue um, rotting at the bottom. They're made of metal. They're rotting at the bottom because they, you don't put bags in them. Rumpke doesn't put bags in them when they empty them. They, they just are metal cans. We've looked into um, purchasing um, plastic liners, molded plastic liners that can go in those to keep the bottoms from rotting. Those are very, very expensive um, to the tune of about $13,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And how many trash cans is that? Um, we have a total of 40 something on both okay. between Xenia and Dayton. Uh, I believe that Jason said we're affected. Um, we're looking at other possibilities. Um, I, I mentioned to, I've talked to Karen and I've talked to Brian about the potential for um, having the aggregate cans uh, potentially redecorated. Um, 
in some way to make them a little bit more appealing and putting them side by side, one for you know regular trash and one for recycle. Um, we've talked about uh, purchasing a different kind of can uh, and we're looking at all of that. Those garbage cans that are currently on Xenia Avenue uh, and Dayton Street could be reused at say Gaunt Park or mm -hmm. one of the other parks where our personnel uh, would empty them, village staff would empty them and therefore we could put bags in them. It's just not feasible to do that with the cans that Rumpke empties uh, because of the, the time constraint. So um, I will keep you updated and we'll be working with the Public Arts Commission on potentially different ways to decorate the cans downtown and, and make use of what we have. And you got what I sent about I the did. ceramic? I did. Okay. Thank you very much. Make um, sure that um, the recycling is very clearly labeled. Mm -hmm. If it's not mm -hmm. clearly labeled, right. people don't do it. <coughs> yeah. What we were and going to do <coughs> with the cans is paint the top of one of them green with the recycling symbol on the top, and it's, mm -hmm. it would say recycle. What I would suggest is talk to um, Tom Clevenger here in town. That's he's got that's his area of expertise. Is he where he was the head of recycling at the University of Washington for several years. So okay, he's well, got very clear ideas about what actually works with public signage and what doesn't okay. work. Great. So yeah, I'll invite him to our next public art commission meeting because we should be ready to talk about it next month. I would think maybe. so. Okay. I think so. Um, the work on the limestone streets, uh, street improvements has begun. Um, they should have gotten across Walnut Street today with the water line. I didn't get down there to check it. Uh, they are hoping to be all the way across Xenia Avenue by next Thursday. Uh, they've run into a couple of problems with some of the, the limestone, surprisingly on limestone street. <laughs> um, so that slowed them down a little bit. but. Um, they are moving along with that and it, they should be <clears throat> out of the way by the time school starts on Friday. Um, yes, we did begin flushing the water system today. Um, not only did council get calls, but we got several calls. Um, we're just asking people to be patient about it. Um, the, the crews are working as quickly as they can to get the system flushed so that everybody has nice clear water. Um, there has been some discussion um, as to uh, doing parts of it at night, um, especially down by the Friends Care Center uh, because of their water needs. So um, they are working to get it done as quickly as possible and at a minimum of inconvenience for the residents. And we used to, <coughs> we used to do it starting at 4 in the morning. Yeah, and that's something that Johnny has talked about and he's going to schedule his crew yeah. uh, at the time. He was going to go down and talk to, to the Friends Care Center and uh, see what they had to say about what timing would work best for Especially them. when we got downtown. Right. Because uh, of the we businesses. We to make sure we were done before the businesses opened right. up. Right. Yeah. I will talk to Johnny and make sure that that is, is happening. Uh, the last thing that I have is not on my report. Um, Last council meeting, we talked about uh, applying for a Nature Works grant, and we actually uh, passed the legislation to enable us to do that. The next day, I got an email um, from Green County. Apparently, in Green County, they do this cooperatively. Each, let me back up a little bit. Each county in Nature Work gets a set amount of money based on your population for your county, and. But generally, you apply to Nature Works, and they just give the money out until that amount for your county is gone. There are two counties in Ohio that do it a little bit differently, and they get together and cooperatively um, decide who gets to apply for the money that's available that year and try to make sure that it's not the same people every year getting the grants. Um, this year, it was decided that it was a Beaver Creek and Jamestown that are, were going to be the two that were permitted to apply. We were the only other um, municipality that wanted to apply. That kind of puts us at the forefront um, for next year. Um, but we were, it was decided that it would not be Yellow Springs turn this time because we apparently in the recent past got a large amount of money. Um, from Nature Works and these other two entities had not gotten the money for a while, so they were trying to even it out a little bit. It's probably for the Glen. I, I don't know of any public projects that we got I think, grants I for. Think it, so I think it was a Nature Works that we got for the Glen a while mm -hmm. back. It was the bathrooms. 
Um, at the Glen, the, the bath, room. yeah, mm -hmm. the, the handicap, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. and so anyway, I will continue to look for other sources of funding, and I did get the information on the, uh, the plastic, the molded plastic that was in that uh, particular piece of equipment we were looking at, and I did forward it to Nadia and I think also to Brian. Yes. And so we do have that, and she's reviewing that, so if the opportunity comes up, we'll at least be on the same page, um, and we can take it to the, the PAC. Great. Patty, uh, are you done? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to, you mentioned about the tree trimming, and I was wondering um, if there have been any thoughts about the tree by the funeral home on Xenia? You know, I, I um, it's on private property. I did go down there um, to introduce myself and, and talk to them about it, but unfortunately they were not there. Uh, at the time and I need to try to get back down there and talk to them about it. They will it. never be there. You need, you're going to need to call them um, at their headquarters in Springfield. They yeah. really are only here um, when, when they a have funeral. a funeral. Yeah. So you'll need to call. Okay. Um, the contact is Frank. Um, yeah, I'm getting nervous I'll, I'll about get that one. Okay. Yeah. What, what about the tree? They're it's very dead. dangerous. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah. Okay. When they're, they, they get so brittle. Yeah. The ash tree. Yeah, and it's huge. Um, and then can you give an update about Ellis Park? Oh, yes. About the bridges? I'm sorry, you did, you did ask me to do that, and I completely forgot. Um, what Brian is talking about is the two pedestrian bridges yep. at, at uh, Ellis Park. Um, Jason is talking to um, the local Boy Scout troop to see if they have an Eagle Scout or that if someone locally has an Eagle Scout who's looking for a project. And that would be probably the footbridge that would go across the, the back stream back in the Arboretum. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've talked about up front by our spillway is potentially putting two um, concrete culvert pipes side by side to uh, allow the drainage to come over and go down those with a pedestrian bridge over the top of that. Um, made, I believe, out of wood is what Jason is talking about, a, a nice wooden footbridge over that. So that's, the, that's what Jason is working toward is to get those pipes in place and get the bridge over the top. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda are the standing reports from council representatives. We'll start with Lori. Okay. Um, Planning Commission did not meet this month, um, but I suspect we'll be back at it next month. And uh, the Green Counting Planning Commission had a project that we looked at uh, down by Springboro and um, also passed the budget and there was much contention with um, budget cuts from Green County that is ongoing and I think there was an email about that yeah, I did include that I went to the um, I went to the to the uh, county uh, commissioners um, planning meeting about that and um, uh, um, what's um, I'm, why am I going Alan what, why am I going blank on who's the director Steven 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 Steven, Steven, Steven yeah Steven got a little bit uh, a little bit um, of uh, Sherahan was there um, talking to about um, you know we asked you to cut the budget we told you we needed to cut the but you needed to cut the budget and um, they actually came back with a higher budget Hmm. adding an extra staff person so I think that that they're going back to the drawing board Green County I think regional planning is going back to the drawing board to come up with a new budget um, look at the budget um, and because the reality is that and and there is actually talk now that Xenia may be pulling out mm -hmm. Beaver Creek's already pulled out Fairborn's pulled out and there's talk that Xenia will pull out that's th those are the main funders mm -hmm. those large communities because it's a per capita um, my position and what I said is that I would rather see them kind of lower the fees for the municipalities who aren't directly using the services because I feel like we need regional planning we need somebody looking at the region planning it it's not just about oh we're gonna look a, we're gonna review this project yeah that's a piece of it mm -hmm. but it's broader it's having yeah. a planning arm looking at the whole county so I'm hoping that this is going to be worked out I'm hoping that they're going to find a way they're going to increase fees our fee would be increased they're going to in increase fees on the developers um, and um, then find out what the difference is and the county will have to decide if they're going to add that money in yeah otherwise they're going to be cutting staff they're going to be going from 
two down to one potentially. So um, that was so that was it. That's it for me. Who's next, Jerry? That's me. The library commission they didn't meet uh, this past month, and unfortunately, I missed both the uh, community resources and mediation meeting. I do know that community resource will be meeting uh, down at uh, Peaches on Friday to have, a, have, a, have an open discussion. Uh, mediation didn't meet, and now I'll uh, get the minutes from John and pass them on. Um, so uh, first of all, Human Relations Commission, uh, the block parties are in full swing, and uh, I've been able to stop by quite a few, and I've been hearing all kinds of great things thanks to the village for helping set everything up um, you know just the idea that we're supporting this and new families are getting to meet each other I know the one that happened um, at the 1300 block of Spillan was uh, they said the first time they'd ever done one in that area as far as they knew before and that was really exciting for them so uh, I'm glad that it's been reinvigorated and I want to thank the HRC because there's been a lot of energy put into getting people excited um, I mentioned yellowspringshelp.org which is our online online resource guide um, that website is now done and so we're starting to test it and basically the idea is service providers that you know everything from help to pay your bills to food banks to mental illness support um, input their own information on their services and then ultimately we're going to be training organizations and uh, the PD etc to use this uh, we also applied for a Miller fellow I think I mentioned to, to help with uh, training people on how to use it um, and uh, we approved several projects uh, to support youth leadership at the schools and also uh, self-defense for um, female students so we're excited about those projects uh, so we've been busy um, community access panel uh, what did I write here um, oh uh, we are gonna have a link on our main website to the village uh, meetings that are on YouTube uh, at this point I think it might have been hard for some people to find them because community access panel has a sub site I talked to Bruce today because uh, I found out this was something that Paul had recommended um, and so that should be on there and, and Judy I think you recommended right on the on the main page yeah I would think because that way you don't have to do so many sub links under yeah. each I found it difficult meeting. to find the right. meetings yeah so that should not be an issue and then of course once we move over to the eGov site then that will also be prominent um, and uh, in our last meeting we agreed to uh, have community access panel take on the municipal broadband issue so uh, as, as Jerry knows because he subbed for me the Springs net representatives came we're going to be meeting uh, on Wednesday so the community access panel meeting has no the community access panel meeting has been canceled but there's going to still be uh, some of the Springs net folks meeting to talk about some of those issues so that they can then bring that to the community access panel next month all right but there are signs up that that's been canceled um, regarding the Public Art Commission uh, we reviewed the street musician agreement um, and there weren't a lot of changes that were recommended uh, a few tweaks um, but what the consensus of the group was is that we really hope that at our next meeting which is September 10th um, that some of our local buskers will come uh, I, I think there was a strong feeling that before we uh, finalize the pilot policy that we would really like to get their input um, and so uh, you know we'll try to make that as as clear as possible to announce and reach out to them uh, to attend and and just get their feedback on what they think um, and uh, we had the presentation with Thought Bubble, and so I guess this is something that uh, I was uh, tasked to come back with a recommendation. It turns out that uh, there are more things to consider with the skate park. Uh, so what I would like to do is uh, set up 
sort of a, an area for council and the Public Art Commission members to look at how it would function um, if we were gonna use the skate park since we could still use feedback. Um, for example, we're talking about different ideas for location and whatnot. So I thought in the next two weeks, um, if everybody agrees that we could look at that internally, if we think that this is a tool that makes sense for um, the Village Public Art Commission to use, then we could make it public. So um, I guess, um, I don't totally understand what you what you're doing. You're going to set it up and just will have access to it. Yeah, so we'll not. It's not going to be public uh, right now. It's just it's actually set up for us to use, um, and we can play with it internally. And then if we uh, think that it's something that would be useful, then we could make it go live. So I'm guessing like that's a, a violation of Sunshine Law. What is? I'm guessing it's a oh, violation of Sunshine Law. For us to look at it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all of council cannot participate. Maybe. Only Maybe. two council members can participate on Thought Bubble. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if two council people tried it and... and... I'll accept what you guys come up with. Okay. I mean, another option is we can just try it. I, I mean, think it's you can just, I'm fine with you guys just trying just try it personally. It. Okay, awesome. Let's just try it. See if okay. it works. If it works, great. Great. But and again, I mean, it's... I, and I, but you can send it. Now, you know, we can go on it. We just can't communicate. So, you know, send us all of the information so we can go on it. We can see what's happening. We just can't respond. We couldn't respond among ourselves right. about it. Right. And we did talk about related to Sunshine Law that it is not something that we can deliberate, you know, as a commission on or anything like that. That's so correct. I mean, you guys cannot be on it any more than we are. I mean, you guys are going to have to limit your numbers. Right. Of, uh, you understand that Public Art Commission members only. How many of you of them of you are there? Uh, six. Then only two. Of, only two of you can. Six, including alternates. Uh, we haven't voted on the alternate yet, but we have six full members. Oh, you have yeah. six, six full members. Yeah. Okay. And so well, um, is three a, is three a majority or? And actually, I guess I'm included, so we really have seven. That's that's it. It's always got to be yeah. <laughs> three. Then, then so, only three of you can, can right. communicate. Yeah. Right. But I guess you know what we had. Um, so I just to roll back. Um, we had talked about sort of you know playing with the application but in terms of deliberating or anything like that everybody understands and we had a lengthy discussion about we can use that information and talk about it in our publicly announced meeting but not use it as a tool to communicate with each other but I so but I what I'm saying is that I think um, our legal counsel would say only three of you could be participating on that in that open forum. In that forum. Yeah. So so you probably need to, on this particular subject, pick three PAC members that are going to be the participants. Right. And so those three members are the only ones who can. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reality is it's. It's um, more to get outside. It's getting outside exactly, now. Yeah. So, when, so when I talked, when I thought about playing with it, it was more just putting comments on there, but, you know, just seeing how it works right. but I understand the concern and yeah everybody does know we can't deliberate okay. or anything like that it's for outside feedback okay, okay great um, and then uh, we get to uh, AJ Warren um, so I, I know we had in our packet a letter of interest and uh, AJ's resume I feel like we've almost had two council people interview AJ because I've worked with AJ quite a bit. Karen's been to several meetings. Um, and so uh, what I really like about um, AJ's involvement is number one, he's uh, young, he's 23. Uh, he also has a lot of expertise uh, as an engineer and he's brought a lot of value to the uh, skate park project. Um, and he's specifically applying to be an alternate in this case um, and uh, so that he can kind of see how it works and and ultimately I think he'd be interested in being a full member but uh, what I would like to make a motion is to approve AJ Warren as an alternate to the Public Art Commission. I second. Okay. 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank Thanks. Marianne? Okay, the Energy Board did not meet this month. Um, I got something in my packet, but was that only from, from me, Judy? No, no it, was, it was in everybody's It's packet. from the May meeting. Yeah. And then there were all these emails. Is that what was presented at the hearing, at the appeals hearing? Yeah. Right, that's what Lauren read? Yeah, that's from Energy Board. I, I, it happened while I was gone, and it was printed out as goes yeah. in the next packet because it came in late. So. so those were the emails that she read at the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why the May meeting, I mean, we've had meetings and minutes since the, the May meeting, and I reported on the last meeting that we had, which was when we had uh, Joe Sampson, I think his name, from uh, St. Paris come and talk about um, uh, the solar array that serves their water treatment plant. Whenever I get approved minutes is when they go in, so. I, I didn't get any of any information. I'm sorry. In, in the electronic packet, there was no information. None of I actually this. have no idea why those are in there. I haven't the vaguest clue. I was gone. They were in the right. stack. I bet packed them. Your guess is as good as mine. There you have it. And just for my clarity, the secretary of well, any board, I guess, sends the minutes to you. They're supposed yeah, to need to approve them and then send them to me. Yeah, yes. Okay. And it, it often works that people send them and they're not approved, and then I have to say, oh. go forth and approve. Okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> they eventually get back to me. But yes, it, it's it, it helps a lot if um, uh, the the council rep or whoever just says, you know, as soon as these are approved, okay, send them. Okay, I wasn't and, up on that, and I hadn't been. Yeah. Seeing, but. Yeah, it's kind of everyone sort of does it differently every commission but I think er, my understand I talked to Eric Johnson who's the secretary he's he indicated he sent them sends them to you so mm -hmm. maybe he sent the wrong ones and that's why the May 13th ones are in the packet I don't know accidentally I don't know or August July. so so the June the, yeah there should have been June minutes which would have been I never that print them and put them out frankly that's just because they were they were there I never put did them you hard meet in I July because yes this is met in July so that's the meeting that I, think I this is just the information that was brought to us at the last at the last meeting. meeting about the the solar array and this is what this because what circled on the second page or did you circle that I did not I mm -hmm. is the information about sunshine law yeah um, so uh, that's why I think there's the May minutes are here. But yeah. I, I could be wrong. I can figure it out, but not now. Okay. 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 Um, are you done, Marianne? I'm done. Um, Chamber, we have a, um, a meeting here. It's at noon um, in rooms A and B this coming Thursday. It's about constant contact letters and announcements. So. Um, we already have almost 50 people signed up, and we're going to reach occupancy on that room pretty fast. So um, I'm really excited about it, though. Um, I actually just went to a presentation in Cincinnati last week, and we heard some stuff on constant contact, and it was really valuable. Um, MVRPC, it was a very quick meeting, probably the quickest I've ever been there. It probably took longer to drive back and forth than we met. <laughs> um, they did do a presentation on the Dayton Region Green Initiative that I'm very interested in. Um, it's through Montgomery County, but they're looking for other communities to be involved and businesses to be involved. So I'm, I actually, the woman who's in charge of it sent me a resolution. They're asking communities to pass resolutions. Problem is that the resolution is very centric to, to, to Montgomery County. So I'm talking to her about how can how can they expand their effort and how can we be involved? Because um, it, it just doesn't seem to make sense if it's just Montgomery County. So I'm trying to fine tune that so that we can, we can get involved because I would like to be a community that represents um, this green sustainable initiative. Mm. Um, and I realize that I just skipped over our well-rested <laughs> and tanned and uh, very athletic um, lobster eating clerk. 
Oh, yeah. Well, mostly it was thank you for putting up my absence and uh, especially thank you to Babette, Patty, and Ruthann who held down the fort and um, made copies of confusing things in my absence. <laughs> so would you, would you would you tell everyone what your what your what place you came in yeah. and what you did your yeah. athletic achievement? Yeah, uh, I should just note that once one gets kind of elderly and stuff, one's age uh, brackets get, get large huge. and the number of participants within them shrink. <laughs> <laughs> but you yes. won. I did. Yes, I won. Oh, well, it tell what did you win? Won. Nobody won. knows what you're talking about. <laughs> it was the Lake Erie uh, two mile open water swim, and it was wow. uh, and the gay games, gay Back games on. and master swim. So, I think so. we had quite a few folks from Yellow Springs oh, yes. up there yes. this yes. week. Christine Hofstra oh, won. It didn't. Christine's got to get like a Sherpa to bring the medals back. Was Melissa? <laughs> was Melissa there? Well, and and Delane Delane Atkins did um, mm -hmm. hockey, and oh. um, her partner Andy. Andy. Andy Atkins and Delane, yes, yeah. Atkins. both of them did hockey and oh. Christine did a lot of biking and that's, those are the only folks that I know about. Okay. So, so that's cool. great. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yep. And, then, and, and then she went and ate lots of lobster. No, I did that before. Oh, you did that before? <laughs> so you were swimming. She was like lobster powered. Environment. That's right. <laughs> Um, okay, let's thank you. And we did miss you, although I agree with you, Patty and Babette did a great job. So, um, on to future agenda items. Um, one item: Do we have legislation? Are there? Do you know? Are you aware of any legislation we'll have? You'll have the legislation that awarding the um, the the bid the four bid three bids that were opening Friday, okay, and that's a resolution. Um, or what? Streetscape, uh, streetscape, uh, Gaunt Park renovations, and um, Mills Lawn sidewalk repair. Okay. What about the water plant and the that RFQ is out, um, and I can't remember the date off the top of my head. Um, September eighth. September eighth. John knows. So it will be after that one will not be um, opened until after. Uh, council's next meeting and at that point there is a review committee um, being set up to look at the qualifications and score them on the scoring sheet um, Karen Jerry myself Joe Johnny um, Scott Straley from RCAP um, will be reviewing all of the RFQs and uh, scoring them and we'll bring that back to council okay not at the next council meeting, but the next one. After Correct. That. The second one second in September. September, September 15th. Um, I would like to bring a resolution um, uh, recognizing um, the opening of the Antioch Wellness Center. There's a um, the opening. The opening will be on September 6th. They're doing a small ceremony, so I would like to read a council resolution, and certainly all council members are invited to attend. So. At the next council meeting, I would like to bring that resolution um, for us to approve and agree to, and read here. So you bring the actual resolution. Yes. You want. Okay. Yes. And so, what will we be? Oh, sorry. Uh, will we be ready, Brian? It sounds like not for the street musician agreement. September fifteenth is what I would recommend. Okay. Because um, I'd like to wait till after our next PAC meeting. Okay. Well. When do you imagine um, we'd be hearing more about the police forums, et cetera? Will you uh, just be reporting on that? Same meeting, cause, uh, September 15th, because our next HRC meeting is September 7th. Okay. Okay. Or no, September 4th, excuse me. So, yeah, so September 15th. And w so will we be able to report out on something <coughs> in the eGov, I guess, at the next meeting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Having that. Yeah, yeah sure. because all of the phone call conferences are Wednesday, Wednesday yeah this so that's nine two okay um, Jerry anything in council chambers yeah we'll have an update okay Got that. Um, and you have the budget, <coughs> budget schedule you need to approve you wanted to look at right oh yeah bring the ask Melissa um, I don't know that she needs to come but just have a recommendation for the budget schedule or just a, maybe so we'll have that uh, discussion in old business um, I think we can take the Port Authority follow-up off. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we're, it's going to be a while before we would ever get to that. Mm -hmm. I know that they're active, and I know that they're actually writing projects. So they're actually oh. writing deals. So Great. they're very excited. They've Green County. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. 
Um, I'm trying to think of what a project was. Oh, one of the, the, the doctors building at Wright State, they're saving them a lot of money. Mm. Um, so um, anything else you can think of, Patty? No, off the top of my head. She so said um, Gaunt <coughs> Park renovations, is that up by the pool? Or um, the baseballs? The base, the ball is, yes, the ball oh. fields. Okay. Um, and um, I do know that the bid, <coughs> uh, the bid packet for the uh, Sutton Farm building is just about ready to go out. Okay. So. Okay. Great. Well, that's enough. I don't mind having concise meetings. So we did okay tonight. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, Joan. I have something that's totally out of sequence. Um, I'm trying to think. John Edwards, um, this is, I realize this is totally out of sequence, but I was asked um, if it was possible for you to look at um, putting a, a restroom of some kind at Ellis Pond. They had, um, there was a party there with a bunch of kids and there's no place to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've had Porta Johns there that just get dumped. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, are we ready to uh, adjourn? Motion? I move. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 aye.